Wait, wait, wait. So you really liked it when you learned what Airflow can do for you and you're totally sold on the idea that Airflow can add value to your data team. And that's why you want to give it a try. You want to test drive it and see how it feels like. All right then, installing Airflow on a Mac and writing your very first stack, all of this in this video in under five minutes. Let's do it. Hey there everybody, my name is Saurav and first things first, I want to make sure that both you and I are efficiently utilizing our time. So for the entirety of this video, here's what I'm going to assume, that you have a basic understanding of Python programming language and that you know how GitHub works. If not, I highly recommend that you pause this video right now and go learn the fundamentals of both Python and GitHub and then come back right here and watch this video all the way to the end. All right now. Let's talk about what we are going to be discussing in this video. So in this video, we will number one, install Docker desktop. Number two, clone the MWAA local runner repository from GitHub. Number three, build image and run the Docker container. And then finally, we'll write that to load a CSV file to a Postgres table. In order to install Docker desktop, we will go to docker.com and download the correct file for our machine. So I'm on a Mac with Apple M1 chip, so I'm going to be downloading this file. Once downloaded, I went ahead and installed it. It was pretty straightforward. And here is how it looks like after the installation is done. So that was step one. Moving on to step two. Oh, wait, wait, before that, you may be thinking, I'm just trying to install and run Airflow. Why do I even need Docker for this? If you deep dive into Airflow's architecture, you'd quickly find that running Airflow essentially means running a bunch of services such as the scheduler, web server, worker, and base nodes. And there's also a Postgres database that is used as a now, database. Now, I won't bore you all by going too much into the details. You can think of it as running Airflow entails running a cluster of Linux machines. And how do you run a cluster of Linux machines in a teeny tiny MacBook? In comes Docker. Docker is that amazing technology that lets you build and run all the Airflow services in Docker containers within our Mac. If you want to learn more about Docker, I highly recommend you go read about it. Number two, clone the MWA local runner repository from it. Okay, so at this point, we need the Docker code to build the Docker images and run Airflow. An easy way to do that would be to get it from AWS's official code base for MWAA. Quick background on the local runner. So AWS provides Airflow as a managed service. And that's why they have built out the local runner. So you can run and test out your code. Now there are other Airflow providers as well in the market, such as Google's Cloud Composer and Astronomer. But we will use MWA. Okay, so we are going to clone the repo into our IDE. Build image and run the Docker container. And then open up the readme. The documentation is pretty clear. I highly recommend reading it before moving forward. In here, you can find commands to build and run Airflow. Once it spins up, you can go to localhost and access the Airflow UI. Now, let's write our very first step. Actually, before we do that, let's talk about what our DAG is actually going to do. Okay, so we will keep things simple here. We should take baby steps as this is our very first DAG. So for this DAG, we will just run a SQL script. Now let's look at the table against which we are going to run our SQL. So the table is called videos. Let me quickly run a select star on it. And yep, as you can see, there are seven records in here out of which there are two duplicates. There are two records for video ID one and there are also two records for video ID two. So that's our first table. Let's look at the second table. The second table is called videos clean and yep, it's empty. What our DAG will do is it's going to take the data from the first table. It's going to remove the two duplicates that we just saw and then it's going to load it to the other table. Now let's look at the SQL for how is it going to do that. So there are two SQL statements here. The first statement is a truncate and then the second statement is an insert and inside it is an inner query. So as you can see, the deduplication logic is pretty simple. Basically what I'm saying here is for every video ID, give me the most recent record. Cool, so that's the 
SQL. Now let's look at the Pythonic DAG definition for our DAG. So this is again pretty simple. So I have a bunch of imports here as you can see. Well, I don't need these. I'm just going to get rid of some of these imports. And then I'm defining the DAG here. So the DAG ID is basically the name of the DAG. So I'm saying the name should be clean up PG videos table. And there's a start date, there's a schedule interval. Yep, that's important. So let's say if I want to run it every day at 10 a.m., right? So what I can do is I can give it a cron schedule with that. And then there's a DAG. Cool, so that's DAG. Next work up is the definition for the task. So there's just one task in this DAG, pretty simple. And as you can see, I'm using a Postgres operator. As if you remember from the first video, operators are basically templates for the tasks. So the task name is going to be cleanup task. And then the most important parameter that I'm passing here is the SQL file name here. Now remember, we could have also passed the entire SQL statement here, but instead I'm choosing to pass the file name and then the Postgres connection ID. Cool. So now let's head back to localhost to our browser and try to run this tag. Oops, need to log in first. So I go click on it. There's just one task in the tag, which is called cleanup task. All right, so I'm just going to switch this DAG on and it should start running on its own. And it failed. Oops, look at the logs here. Oh, okay, I didn't define the connection ID. So the connection ID is RDS underscore PG underscore 12. And that's easy to fix. So let me quickly go ahead and define the connection. How do you do that? I go to admin, connections, connection successfully tested. Let's save it and run the DAG again. Woohoo, now it works. And there you have it, it ran successfully. If we look at the logs to verify, awesome. Rose vector five. So again, go back to our SQL tool and try to query the destination table. Perfect, now there are five records. That's it. And that is how you install, run, and write a DAG in Airflow. I hope you were able to follow along successfully. Do let me know if I missed a step or if you run into issues that I did not cover in this video. That'll be it for this one. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.